Hey YouTube, here's today's project. I just picked up this 2018 uh, Yamaha 250 WR250R 250 um, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm really liking it. it. Has the big oversized tank, which is cool. 4.7 gallons, I think. Uh, looks looks a little out of place. Like it's got a big tumor on it or whatever. But so when I bought the bike, the buyer disclosed that it had a uh, a puncture in the tank. The guy who owned it. Um, biffed it and ran a key somehow through here and made a puncture all the way inside so when the tank is full and you're riding around it's sloshing it kind of leaks out there so today's project we're going to try to uh, get that repaired um, this is an ims tank uh, and they claim that this is a cross-link polyethylene plastic uh, which is very unique because it's very tough and durable but it's almost impossible to repair uh, epoxies don't really work. Uh, the melting point, there really isn't one. It just goes straight to burn. So you can't really melt new plastic in. You can't use the plastic uh, soldering guns that you'll see uh, for other types of plastic. So what we're gonna do is try to use a little LDPE uh, plastic and get it in the hole and see if it'll stick and maintain. And that's about the best repair that I've seen uh, online. Um, the only other thing that I had really come up with is to drill that out round and then put a bolt with the o-ring on it and seal it up that way but there's a kind of a parting line it's not real smooth right in here to get a, a good seal there so we're going to try the LDPE um, fix so I'm going to I'm going to pull that tank off um, I'm not going to show you that if you want to see the tank removed from a WR250R there's a bunch of videos out there I'm sure uh, but it's more about repairing the tank so we'll see in a bit okay so we have the tank emptied uh, make sure you empty it. Don't skimp on that. We don't want any gas in there. Um, no issues, whatever. Uh, but it's empty. It's on the uh, workbench. And first thing I want to do, I kind of wipe the, the grime around, but uh, clean out like inside the hole here. This is a carburetor cleaner, so it should be compatible with everything here. So it should be good. I'm going to let that dry out a little bit before we go too much further. Okay, so I want to open up that hole a little bit so I have a little more surface area and get it roughed up. So I've got, it's uh, a Dremel bit, but it's, uh, I just put it in my drill because I don't want to drag my Dremel out. So we'll just uh, V it out a little bit here. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll uh, get the heat gun going with the uh, LDPE plastic. This is just some strips that I cut from a condiment bottle, a um, little flip top lid. So this will be on the recycle, the little um, arrow thing with the uh, number. It's, this is the number four. Make sure you do, use the number four recycle. It's the LD, the low density polyethylene. Uh, there's a lot of uh, science behind all that that I don't quite understand, but um, we're going to give this a try. This is the from what I've read, this is it should work out just fine. Okay, here's my hot air gun setup, solder gun, hot air. It's not a plastic welder, but it's got hot air. You can turn it on. I've got it set to 196 degrees Celsius, which should be good for what we're doing, not too hot. I'm doing this just because I can control the heat a lot better. Okay, so I've got my air gun up to temperature. I'm get this heated up, see if I can get it to stick on there a little bit. Got a little, it's actually a razor blade, but it's uh, just something clean that I can kind of work this in with.
idea is the idea is to melt the LDPE and get a little bit of heat into the tank. It's more about getting the low density stuff melted in. the small edge to kind of push everything in there. It appears it kind of turns clear when it's melted. And I want to push through a little bit of material into the far side of the hole to kind of form a plug in there. Oops, sorry guys. A little extra off. Okay, there we go. I think we're good. Uh, we'll let it cool down, put some gas in, and see what happens. Here's some pretty exciting footage. I'll write as fast forward through all this, but I'm putting about two gallons in that what was in the tank, so um, let's see what we got. As far as the leak goes, the puncture. Okay, here's the test. And now there's fuel up on it. Yeah, looks pretty dry. Well, uh, if I have any troubles with it, I'll update the description. But I think this is a pretty good fix for these uh, cross-linked polyethylene tanks. They're uh, not a whole lot of repair, ways to repair it, but this is pretty straightforward. I like it. So uh, if you would, uh, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. So thank you. So one other thing I'll show you since I'm putting gas is these spouts, these new spouts are horrible. They're 
just a pain in the butt to um, you know hold down and you know, have them stay open like that. But what you can do is you pull this o-ring off, push that out, that all comes apart. There's a spring in there. Take that spring out. It'll make your life so much easier. You can take that red thing off too if you want to do that. Put your o-ring back on. Boom, you're good. And then it, it just stays open, which is really nice. They still kind of suck, but it's better than it was. So just a quick shout out for these pliers. These are for fuel injected uh, fuel lines. They have little tips that will push those buttons in from either side. It's hard to get my big old um, fingers in there. So these are uh, these are awesome. I'll put a link down in the description. I'm not sponsored or anything, but uh, I just thought they're pretty handy.